on the video bit, which I can't edit for shit. So that's that. And uh, here we go. We'll get this thing started. Hello and welcome to Four Beers In. I am Brendan. Timmy. <laughs> Marco. Hey, I'm Matt. <laughs> Just nice going. Timmy. Um, <laughs> Timmy. <laughs> it's clockwise. It's always clockwise. I thought that was <laughs> I didn't expect to be second. Uh, yeah, so we are at Frolic again, because that's where our beers are coming from. Um, otherwise, it'll be the liquor store and home. But uh, I've gone with the trusty APA today. Tam, you're, you're sipping the seltzers. Wildberry seltzer. Marco, how's that pumpkin, man? It's pretty good, but I didn't brew it, so I don't know as much about it. I did. That's why I'm giving you the segue. Okay. Oh. <laughs> oh, it, it broke our mash ton. We put a lot of pumpkin in there. And we pumpkin's lo- heavy. Subtle. Well, it, yeah. it, it was heavy, but the thing was is I think we lost a bit of it in the process. And pumpkin like, is a lot of water as is, well, so it, it yeah. t- takes a lot to get the flavor. So if anything, I would call that the pumpkin spice beer. Are you suggesting there's such thing as pumpkin jerky? <laughs> oh. Because that's something I could get behind. Really? I mean, pumpkin jerky. This there's probably year. some vegans who are... Are all about that. Yeah, I don't know I'm any sure of them. It, I'm sure it exists. I don't know any of them. That, I don't know out. any of them that show up to shit. Yeah, <laughs> that's true. Um, and and Matt sipping on the same beer that I am. Uh, that's kind of turned into your mainstay. You used to drink the brown. Yeah, maybe in winter I'll go back to the brown. But I've been on the IPA kick nice. all I, year. I dig it. I'm so. really happy with that. So today's topic is cars. Brought to you by Marco. Yeah, I just thought it would be an easy easygoing topic for everybody because everyone who's pretty much grown up in in the states has some experience with a car in one way or another you've got the mike pence fly flying yeah Yeah. he's trying to make a pence out of you yeah (laughs) he really is i'm not gonna vote for this fly he just has some he's just got some things to get off his chest just let him talk into the mic (laughs) for a few minutes fly you have the floor (laughs) <laughs> so on my website, I'm going to start selling those fly swatters, and that's what this is really all about. Yeah, sneaky I, advertising. I, I snuck the fly in with me. You can get fly swatters for like ten for a dollar at the Dollar Tree store. Is that where you got to go? Because we looked at <laughs> our King Supers yeah, doesn't have them. King Supers ain't got shit. Not this time of year. No, they probably would have them in the or early for the spring. listeners outside of the Colorado region. The Kroger. Kroger, yeah. yeah. Your Kroger's and yeah. Safeway. I don't even know if Safeway's much out of eh. They mentioned on The Simpsons once. I'm sure it's national oh. enough. See, I, I was a huge fan, still am, of Publix. Sounds communist to me. We don't have those here, That's but I've yeah. heard good things. We're not in the South. They make really, like, Publix subs are better than Subway, which is right next door to this brewery. Everything but is better than Subway. Yeah. I think yeah. that's what that fly wanted really to say. I, you know, the I, chicken patty looks like a piece of tofu that they call meat. How does it compare to Wawa? <laughs> it's, <laughs> pressed, it's pressed chicken. It looks weird. Yeah, pressed chicken. You guys have Wawa in New York, right? Uh, I don't know. Or is that more of like a... Regional references get your regional audiences. Right. We're Just trying saying. to get all the regions. I'm trying to think of some regional things. So far, the only thing I've heard of is King Supers and Subway. And Publix. Mm. Never. Oh, wait. In Alaska, I think they have Kroger. All right. Georgia, Florida, you've been there, yes? No. Oh. (laughs) I've never set foot in either of those states. Okay. Because I'm winning at life. Uh, (laughs) Yeah, we just lost our three Florida people. (laughs) Um, Anyway, back to cars. Mm. Yeah. I like the band. I feel like everyone has had some kind of experience with a car, maybe like a first car. Or like your first kiss in a car. Oh. I don't know what that Nissan told you, but it's all lies. <laughs> <laughs> or it's the tailpipe taking. <laughs> for me, um, if you use the my, gas tank, it gets knocked up. Yeah. You know, <laughs> my grandpa owned a classic car. It wasn't a classic when when he, he owned was introduced. It. He into called the it my new family. car, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and he worked really hard for yeah. it. But a 50, 56 Ford F100 is kind of like our 
family heirloom car. A truck. I do yeah. like the classic Ford over the classic Chevy. I will say that much. I kind of have to agree. That front end and the... Like, yes, this, it's a little uh, more boxy. The more Chevy's more roundy. It's more stylized, yeah. We yeah. might have to throw Chevy's some pictures really up on our book face. Yeah, because I don't know what either front. of these vehicles look like. Yeah. But I like so. boxy versus rounded. So yeah. we're going with that. Volvo. Boxy, but good. <laughs> Yeah, duh, four, pe- four beers in on Facebook, right? Yeah. We'll put pictures yeah. of most of the cars we reference. We can't catch them all. Thank you. And you Matt has talked about things that make you sentimental about a person. And for me and my grandpa, thinking about that truck reminds me of my grandpa. What are all some right. memories with your grandpa in that truck? Did you take you for drives, Sunday drives? Did you work on it with I him? I never was actually allowed in it. Oh. <laughs> it was the forbidden fruit. the touch. actual truck. It was reminded, the forbidden yeah. fruit. So yeah. much as now, like a child, you were sticky a lot. <laughs> so, did you learn how to change oil or anything, change a tire on that truck? Um, did your grandpa teach you anything like that? It's interesting because I never learned that stuff until I was an adult. And actually recently, because of COVID, I started teaching myself that stuff. Because um, my dad never taught me that stuff. Um, and actually... as the truck was going to be handed down to my dad, but he wasn't as mechanically inclined as my uncle. So it's kind of uh, with my uncle's family, and they take really good care of it. They, like, restored it. It, it and should go to who's going to love it the most. Yeah, you know? was they it, take it to was car it like shows. A, and, was and it going to be a birth stuff. order thing with your dad? <laughs> I think so. Yeah, that's the wrong approach. Yeah. It should be. Some people are just naturally car and inclined. I'm my dad right. was good not. enough to think that, yeah, it should go to whoever takes care of it the Oh, that's best, nice of him. Which not... In those family situations, that doesn't, it doesn't always, always happen, happen no. either. So, yeah, definitely didn't happen with grandpa. Yeah, he went to the home. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. Um, I, I think I don't, my grandparents didn't have any sort of cool car. My grandma didn't really drive, but weirdly, she had a Ford station wagon with the woody panels. And it was like teal blue with the woody panels. That's all I remember. And I, I remember dreading to have to ride in it because when we visited my grandma, they lived in this really, really, really ritzy neighborhood in Cashers, North Carolina. Their neighbor was the guy who wrote Forrest Gump. Tom Mon- Hanks? Like, <laughs> no, not who starred in it, who wrote it. I believe he came up with most of those lines himself. <laughs> and uh, It's method. So that car was really only taken to take us to the country club at the bottom of the hill. That's the car Ritzy neighborhood people it, have? It, or is that the one they allowed children in? It was the one they allowed Got the children in. Got a pattern here. You and Marco have something in common. in the back. Did it flip around it so you could wave have, at the people That was the you? only cool thing about that car. Oh, was that Those were that. good and bad. They were the good for the kids. But it sucked for the people behind because I didn't, like, I don't want this fucking kid waving at I me. I think I had an uncle with one of those, and I did not like looking at traffic yeah. when I was, like, I would always be, like, that biting my, my face. That was my dad's family's uh, car also when they were growing up. You guys up. had one, too? And I think the reason why we don't still have that one in the family is because it was also, like, the high school beat-around car that, like, <laughs> all my aunts and uncles, <laughs> like, learned how to drive with. I think it was like a Country Squire station wagon. I don't know if it's the same one that you're talking about. I'd have to look at pictures because like I don't the know the wood panels. Yeah. And yeah. yeah. And those are actually turning into classics now, too, oddly enough. With their one and a half Even mile though, per gallon. <laughs> yeah. Leaded. Yeah. When they put V8s in cars that probably didn't need V8s, and now they put it was V6s meant to carry in like cars eight that kids. should be V8s. <laughs> and that's probably part of why they're classics now is because they just have ridiculous power. <laughs> Yeah, and nobody would ever remanufacture one <laughs> because it would never sell. Uh, Speaking of that, you mentioned last week you wanted a uh, Volkswagen bus really bad. They're, they're wow. reintroducing the bus. Yes. Where, do, where does your desire for a bus come from? Well, I always like, I don't, I'm not a huge car person. But she's a hippie. Well, I guess I kind of <laughs> was, Beck. I mean, I'm the youngest out of four, and my brothers definitely were in the Grateful Dead kind of era. Bus but is kind of significant of a lifestyle. Not, that's not why. Well, that could be part <laughs> of it, because I definitely liked that hippie, like, yeah, let's get in the bus and do whatever. But, like, the one thing I love about those, they're you're, kind of like mini campers, if you think yeah, about it. Yeah, you've always got a place to oh sleep it Oh, my God, off. yeah. I've always wanted one that, like... You'd pop up the top, and you can sleep wherever you were. They had little sinks. and I've never been in or on a bus, a, a Volkswagen bus, so oh, I have really? no idea what the inside is like. Do they have stretch-out well, stretch out the, and sleep the places? The newer ones, some older did. ones, some of them have sinks in it. Some have, I mean, it really Some did. were a full-on, like, 
had beds. RV you could pop. Like yeah. It was probably like they were some awesome. sick retro mod builds. I, I can imagine. They're probably going to do something like they did with the Beetle and just put a flower vase on the dashboard or something. Right. Right. And make it really stupid. And here I go buy this nice, big, expensive RV that is... And I want a bus. We don't even mass. use... That doesn't yeah, we don't even use half of that You can't drive that thing. everywhere. Like, one of these, you can kind of sneak into yeah, the areas I, and... Yeah, I that's frankly true. don't have any desire to navigate one of those big RVs through the right. city so, or, or yeah. any neighborhood streets. Even trying to park it here in the parking lot. My fondest yeah. memory is... a. Uh, uh, Jeep Wagoneer, though. Wagoneer. Wagoneer. Was it hey, a it had the w- yes. I that think was my apparently in style. I googled that, and that I'm was like the wag. I forgot what they. I had to write it. The wooden. <laughs> the Wagoneer. Can't read your own I can't writing. Can't even read my writing. But they were more the in style, like they're. But my dad used it for. He's a lar- he was a small and animal a small and I think large I actually animal have a picture vet. Of it. And he would use those to carry medicine to his large animal They made clients. a Woody yes. PT cruiser. So he'd go to the large <laughs> animal, whatever, and he had all of the medicine. And then once that car retired, he would give it to us kids to drive. And so we would call them the beast. And they were. You'd, but the funny <laughs> thing is, like they had four wheel, but you had to get out of the car, turn this little knob. Oh, on yeah. The, yeah. You had to lock the hub oh, caps. Yeah. yeah, I had to do that recently on uh, work trucks. Wait, what? Really? Yeah. yeah. So to put it Very in four wheel drive, you had to get out of the vehicle. Well, I remember that. But I'm just <laughs> and saying you had on to a turn it one? on the tire. It wasn't a new vehicle. It was just still operational as a commercial mm-hmm. my work vehicle. They were so it? much fun. That's the uh, only I picture know. I have of it. Which was, I was trying to get all artsy. Oh, wait, wait, my dad. Oh, yeah, so you know how you have some people Uh that treat them very nice? My dad just puts it in the back of his acres of land. That kind of reminds me of... And lets the trees grow out of it. In high school, I was not friends with him, but a friend of a friend of a friend had an international... That international international. four by four that he would basically take off-roading in the suburbs here and... That thing could climb a tree. Yeah, well, it's funny because, insane. like I said, I'm the fourth. It's basically it a Hummer went, before Hummers. It went to all of us kids. My For brother sure. got it first, then my sister got it, and then my brother David really took it real. Like, he would take it off-road, and it got even stuck in mud. It got The mud went right into the bottom of the vehicle. And, and by then the time it, you got it, you well, didn't have it a Well, it froze floorboard. overnight, and we had to wait until the summer to get it out because <laughs> he was in the muck. And then I got it after that. We called it the Beast. It was the best thing ever. It My squeaked. F- yeah. People always heard us coming. <laughs> I like when you call a car the Beast, ironically. <laughs> I had a friend with a Beast that broke down every time it went the up beast. a hill. It's more than 20% grade. It wasn't that one, though. It was a brown <laughs> one, not the blue one. and had the wood on the side. Oh, well, fine. Mm-hmm. Did it have a floorboard? <laughs> That's funny. She yes. laughs because it didn't. One of them didn't. No, th- one of the cars that he had us drive didn't have, it had a big hole in the floor. And so we just put a mat over it. Flintstones. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Flintstones. <laughs> Begin breaking procedures. We're three miles to our destination. Like I said, that's what's <laughs> funny because nowadays in generations change where people graduate and they buy their kids' cars where we drove the shit cars that I can't believe they even were allowed and to we're be on the road. And better for it. And my parents were like, if you want a car, you get a job and you buy a car. That's I guarantee how I you. I guarantee if you drive by any random high school at about one o'clock on any weekday, you're going to see oh at least man. a handful of BMWs. It drives me crazy because it took us. Like I'm, I love Jeeps. Like I like big vehicles. Yeah. So if you go by me, so if I see young kids drive Jeeps, I'm like, how do you fucking ex- like really? I can't we had to save up for that, and like you, <laughs> like a, a 17 year old is driving it. Like, are you kidding me? To, yeah. Like it makes me sick. <laughs> Yeah, it's it's a little sad because I, I felt bad. It's not like I could buy a car for my son. Thankfully, he his mom's family is... Hand-me-downs are what you give your kids. Yes. You don't buy them freaking cars. Th- that's kind of And like, that's what yeah. they have to learn. And that's what fix, I get mad at that because you <laughs> yeah. have to show respect and appreciation. And like, I'm glad here's, my dad Here's talked. why you don't buy a kid a nice car. My sister crashed like four of them before she was that's 18. Funny. <laughs> that's a perfect reason. <laughs> yeah. And my mom just got a cheaper one every single time. I like, don't know why she kept buying she her got one. That far. I know. My sister was done after the first one, and she <laughs> didn't actually get her driver's license till she was in her mid twenties, because it like traumatized <laughs> her. I um, think my mom was very motivated by not wanting to drive any of us anywhere ever. Yeah, we live in the country. We so got our also licenses. My mom's <laughs> <Pretty quick. laughs> but my sister was like traumatized. I was not allowed <laughs> to get my license as soon as I should have because I pulled a stunt that not many people 
normally oh, would have ever have done. Bastard Brendan stories are the classic uh, stories. <laughs> I, uh, I, I, I got a piece of mail one day. I was 15 years old. Out and of whose mailbox? It was our mailbox, but it had my name on it, but my dad's name was underneath it, and it came from a bank. And I'm like, well, what the fuck? I, it's my name. I opened it. And according to the He's piece just saying of paper, that because that's federal law. My name was on top. <laughs> it was a $20,000 CD bond. And so I sat on it for a while, and, and I figured out a way after some thinking to practicing signatures to to put some things together to <laughs> to send a signature over to the bank uh-huh. and to cash that sucker out mm-hmm. long story short i did figure out a way to manipulate the situation and faxed over a letter to the bank saying i allow my son brendan to cash out this cd bond so did you write myself and then scribble that out and put my son <laughs> <laughs> it was digitally done, so there was wow, no it in the nineties too. Yes, yes this was impressive. early nineties. My Photoshop skills were top <laughs> notch at that Must time. Have been. Oh, they were. They were. I, I was. Yeah, I was. I had a graphic design class. I was thriving, man. And uh, this. How was, many graphic design teachers didn't know they were teaching forgery? That's <laughs> true. Yeah, th- this one definitely did not know. Um, and when I got there, I had to pay some penalties for cashing out the CD bond early. It was supposed to mature. So what was, I thought in my head originally going to be like 20 grand. I walked Straight out up. of there with a little less than 15. Ooh, you got, yeah. But that penalties was the most for early withdrawal. Right? That was the most <laughs> as, cash. As, as your wife would say, yeah. penalties for early withdrawal. <laughs> <laughs> that was the most cash I'd ever had in my hand at one point, ever, still to this I've day. I've never had that much cash in my hand. <laughs> um, I would I, roll around naked. I don't care where I am. Bank lobby. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's coming off. Oh, it was it was really hard not to like grin and and just kind of like, oh, fucking God, you yeah, sucker as you walk out. Sucker. I, I did had, you have a plan for this money at the yes, time you were drafting on? Yes. This was a lot of work you put into so this. So I dropped nine and a half Gs on a 1991 Chevy Z71 step side truck that was completely cowboyed out. So this, this big, like, big dude known wise in, in the high school, his name was Ronnie, and everyone knew his truck. Everyone knew him. Like he was a professional bull rider. Like he did he know you were fifteen buying? It? He didn't know I was fifteen, but he knew I <laughs> he was. He just a saw the kid. cash. And, yeah, and, he knew yeah. he had nine thousand dollars. Yeah, he's exactly. like, here you go, and, son. And sure as shit, I gave it to him. And and then I was driving it to school the next day, and I I had gotten away with it for the better part of about two and a half weeks, maybe three. Where'd you weeks. park it? Uh, in the subdivision. <laughs> I was like, how did you park it? Uh, well, Good when question. I first for the first week, I was parking it like three streets up. So I would act like I was going to the bus or whatever. Because at that point, I was like, Dad, stop taking me to school. I can get there on my own. <laughs> and <laughs> that would have been a flag right there. Like, right. Hmm. I, Dad didn't quite pick up on that. And Dad didn't pick up on it until one of yeah. the other staffers sat there and said. You know your son's driving Ronnie Mike's old truck. Now, to be oh, clear, because no. I don't know if this podcast audience knows, your dad was a teacher at your school. Yes, that, that also <laughs> makes things a little bit more clear. My dad was the high, one of the high school guidance counselors and math teachers at my high school. So it was only a matter of time before he found out through either another person in the student body or, in this case, but also, the staff member. To be fair to Hooligan Brendan, <laughs> he did pull it off. It's like for your Bueller. dad to be a teacher, you did pull some some things over his eyes. Well, I uh-huh. think it was for him just to be so thorough. I'm sure it was just a but also, statement. He's much less thorough than having an ethnic mom. My mom would have caught on like the first hour. <laughs> well, I'm sure it was just a statement. You don't want to ride uh, to school. I'm sure Mr. Brendan didn't expect any foul play because it was probably just the quarterly <laughs> statement that she would get anyway. And you don't really think about statements. They come and you look at them and everything's in order and you throw it in the shredder. At least that's what I do with my sons. <laughs> but there was no how did shredder. he catch you? I mean, he, he, he did catch you, but did so he? <laughs> what he had done was is once the, and I want to say it was like the campus security guy. And I think he found out because I wasn't a senior and that truck stopped parking in the senior lot and it was now in the regular uh, junior sophomore lot. We didn't have lot. a situation like that at my high school. And I think it, it I'm, I'm only assuming because my dad never actually told me how or he found out exactly. He just told me who 
And what had happened was, is by the time I went out to lunch hour to go take a spin to our favorite thing was to go to the drive up liquor store. At 15, 16. <laughs> yes. 16 years. Yeah, I didn't even have my license. Oh, 15 years old. Yeah, I was 15. You're and like, I was driving, uh, and we drinking. Would, we would go to the drive up liquor store. The, the You barely look 21 now. How I did you get I, liquor store? The guy didn't care. We'd roll up and be like, go Broncos, pay cash. He'd give us a 12-pack of Natty Light. When I was in high school, we did know. I didn't smoke, but I had a friend who did. And we he did know a guy at a tire store that would not ask questions. And I went with him a few times to pick up a pack. Mm-hmm. This kid was clearly, clearly 16. But, yeah, there was an old man at a Peerless who just didn't give a shit. Yeah. It's funny how the kids find that out because we had a liquor store that we would always hit up yeah, to because they didn't care either. Yeah, we had a liquor either. store where they didn't give any fuck. Mm-hmm. <laughs> he would ask, like, can I see? And as soon as you gave whatever reason, he's like, okay. I wow. left it in the truck. Yep. <laughs> yeah, that much. Beavis and Butthead line. Uh, my ID's in the truck. <laughs> All right. <laughs> but it's, your money's green, right? Exactly. Yeah, it's not traceable, not yeah. sequential. And we would pay cash, so it's not like we would run things right. up on a card or anything like that. It was but the 90s. There was no cameras everywhere always. I went out, and my dad had cock-blocked me to where I couldn't... <laughs> he followed you he, there then. He, well, he knew the truck, whether the guy right. told him or not or whether he just knew the truck. So if you didn't buy a truck that everyone knew, you would have got away with it longer. Quite possibly, yes. Or, but he either followed you or he knew you were probably going to lunch at the liquor store. Well, <laughs> it's about that time my son's off to the liquor I, store. I, I I'll just meet him there. According to my dad, as soon as he found out, he took his truck and just parked right behind me so I couldn't back out and leave. And then there was a car in front of me. And so I couldn't go anywhere. Trapped and in the drive-thru. And that's just it. <laughs> he was sitting in his truck waiting. I and, can see and that, it was too. Like, oh, oh, yeah. Fuck. And see, the thing was, is to paint the picture a little bit more, the high school parking lot was on the bottom of a hill. So as I was coming out of school, I could see my truck instantly. And then it only took a matter of a half a second to see my dad's truck parked right behind it. And I was like, oh. Fuck. Oh, he didn't catch you at the drive through liquor. He catched you no, in the parking lot of the school. Okay, at the I was school. confused. Okay. Yeah. So he, he <laughs> blocked me. He blocked Funnier me so my I way, couldn't though. even go anywhere. <laughs> and then he's sitting in the truck just waiting for me to to come out there. And so when I came out there, he's like, you can drive oh. this home. That's the last time you will ever drive this truck. And he thought he was right. Mm-hmm. So we did drive it home. And then he drove it to a storage yard and put it in a storage uh, locker kind of thing. And I figured out how to take apart a combination lock and get to the keys and get to the information because he put the, the file folder for the storage yard. I had no idea at the time when he put it in a storage yard, which storage yard it was, where it was, what locker number or anything. Found out where he had put all that stuff. He locked it with a combination lock. I picked it with a flathead screwdriver, pulled that shit apart, went to go get my truck. Battery was dead. Asked the guy at the storage yard to give me a jump because my battery in my truck was dead. He gave me a jump. I got the truck out. I was driving it around for almost another two or three weeks. Parking it still three blocks away? Parking it in the different subdivision this time. <laughs> <laughs> so you ended up walking about 50% of the time anyway? I, well, I, I, I walked it's the principle probably of the about thing. a half a mile, but I still got to drive it's my truck. the principle truck. of the thing, damn it. Um, That's just high school in general. Eventually. Yeah. <laughs> even if you're in the parking lot. I got caught again, and Dad was like, this is it. We're not having it. Now we're going to sell it. And the thing is, is that money you had used was supposed to be for your college. I was going to ask... If your so, dad told you what that money was for. It, it was at this point he <laughs> told me it was for college, and, and I thought I was going to get a sc- soccer scholarship. So as far as I was concerned, I didn't give two shits and a fuck. Like, yep. whatever, I'm going to get a soccer scholarship. This was going to be for a car. He's like, that's, that's how fine. Brendan ended up going to DeVry University. <laughs> <laughs> that's how he ended up at Front Range Community <laughs> College, is what it really was. And so he was like, you're not keeping this truck. You know, it, I don't know what it was, but my dad had a massive, massive hatred for this truck. And I think a lot of it came down to the previous owner. There was something about the previous owner that my dad just straight up. Was your dad to. his counselor at school? No, because he might have had some inside counselor. knowledge. My dad was a counselor for last names A through D. This guy's last name was <laughs> M. So it, there, there. It's the personal to be, touch yeah, that you love, yeah. you know. There, there was something else there that my dad was just really rubbed wrong by, and 
So yeah, he, my my punishment was we're selling the truck. He doesn't. He didn't care what we got for it. First offer, I lost two grand. He sold it for like seventy five hundred bucks. And then the next part of the the punishment was is I was not allowed to get my license until I was seventeen. Then not only did he, he this was dumb on his part because after he sold the truck to rub it in and kind of piss me off a little bit that I used to race formula Fords with the, one of the neighbors four or five houses down. So when his son couldn't race, I would race the car for him because it was a certain age bracket and his son was two years older. Well, his son had a 1988 Ford Escort GT bought himself a new car because he got a job, whatever. The neighbor decided to sell it to my dad for three grand before I had my license. I'm 16, 16 and a half. So now I've got this nice 88 Escort GT sitting on my driveway, but I can't drive it because I don't have a license yet. Yeah, try to dad tell me that. Dad did that on purpose to torture you. Well, it, I still... <laughs> His I still, dad didn't learn the prime lesson of well, Brendan the Bastard. <laughs> there's still another story with that car before I even got my license. So there was another girl that lived about four or five blocks away that was my age and one day my parents were gone and I found the keys and I this was a manual so my dad didn't think I could drive it right away where'd you find the keys I was in they, it they goes used in my to mom's have, panty drawer oh my <laughs> god say it takes a lot to get me to go through certain drawers yeah. in my parents house I, I probably would have searched through some panties if I knew there were some keys there I'm sure but you would there's not just my, panties my in there most of the time they had this big huge parents are people too oh That's god Awesome. <laughs> Next week's assignment. Everyone go through your parents', parents panty drawers, drawers. <laughs> and report back what you find. <laughs> oh, my God. That could be pretty nasty. I actually have some good redacted stories on that one. Redacted. <laughs> that might be good. I have some <laughs> terrible stories <laughs> I on do, that too. One. <laughs> actually, it's funny because I don't know. I didn't know what they were until later in life. I'm like, what? It did? Oh, I used it as a microphone. What the hell? <laughs> <laughs> Don't I'll just all. say that. I like the vibrato. <laughs> it was glass. It didn't vibrate. <laughs> <laughs> My stories die with me. It's why I drink, though. <laughs> was that minute three that it was, redacted? It was purple and glass. <laughs> <laughs> it had fingers. What was it? <laughs> oh, it was an old school rabbit. <laughs> no, I understand. There the f- was something glass. <laughs> <laughs> I understand I'm the going. first protuberance, but what is the second one for? <laughs> <laughs> I'm 16. Hmm. Well, at 16, <laughs> I took the key. My parents had this big, huge, like, hope chest kind of thing, and they would put like sodas, snacks, candies money, liquor, things that they didn't really want us to get into in there, and then they would lock it up. You'd think that they would figure out a different way after I had broken into it a couple times. Yeah, I put the keys in my bra. No um, one's finding it there. But they were gone, and there was this girl that wanted to hang out, and I wanted to show off. So, of course, I took the car, drove a couple blocks, picked her up, and then I was showing off a little bit and hit a thing of sand and... You guys know the Legacy Ridge sign? When did you leave the road, or was there sand That's on just the it. Road? I went to turn into the subdivision that was being built. It's At what now speed? Legacy Ridge. Oh, I was probably going about 25, was it a, 30. It wasn't a handbreaker? Uh, no, I just thought I could do it, and it was a front wheel <laughs> drive car, and the t- car didn't turn, and we went <laughs> right up the curb and right into a brick sign. Oh. Mm-hmm. And so the car then spent the next probably five months at an auto shop. Where my dad just let them take their time and told me that the only way it was going to get done is if I got a job and paid yeah, for it. Yeah, my son's paying on the installment plan, so do that, a little bit at a time. I mm-hmm. was not actually legally able to drive that Escort until my senior year because I had to go and get a job and get it paid or in, in able to pay for the... It, it was about $2,000 worth of repair that I, I smashed this car up before even having a license <laughs> trying to show off to a, a girl. And, and that girl now, I don't know. That's not your wife. Part I, was just, I don't know where I was going <laughs> yeah, with that. No, but her last name was Hyman, so I could Hyman. never. Yeah, I, I could never get past that part. Jewish girls are you could hot. Never get past the Hyman. No, no. <laughs> I didn't even get to Hyman touch of, the Hyman. Hyman man. of steel. The and car so didn't do it. The things I did for cars uh, before I was even old enough to drive, and I think part of it, honestly, I blame the fact that I was racing cars before I had a license, so I knew how to drive. 
I just felt like, well, I can drive. I, if I can drive on a yeah. track, why can't I drive on a road? Well, yeah. you answered that question <laughs> when you... <laughs> when I wrecked the car. <laughs> on a simple left turn. It was a right turn. <laughs> okay. <laughs> but, yeah. Uh, so those were my first two cars. It was a, a 1971 Z71, or 1991 Z71 Stepside truck. Mm. Oh, God, it was so awesome. And then a 88 Escort GT, which I thought was a rally car. I thought Escorts weren't great, or does it depend this on what was, kind of this Escort? This was like a special This was a model. GT. Oh, okay. It was a special A friend of mine had and one, and it was horrible. It's like the but Taurus I don't know what show. model it was. Yeah, this was, this was actually it's a... the ultimate sleeper car. It was a... It was the same version as what the the British use for rally racing. It was a Cosworth, so it had a special motor, had a nice little aerodynamic front end and and sides and a spoiler on the end. And I know what spoiler was, is. Yeah, there was a lot of this is wah wah wah. Yeah, it was. It was, I I destroyed the fuck out of that car hmm. to the point where when it was done, probably three years later. I drove it to Houston, and by the time I got to my uncle's doorstep, which my uncle lived in a really, really rich neighborhood in Katy, Texas, just outside of Houston. Are you the trash of the family, oh, by yes. chance? Yes. Because <laughs> okay, you oh, mentioned the, two. Yes. The beast that I spoke of you, earlier, we got Brent, or my brother David would drive it into kind of the rich neighbor. We live in the country, so we could hide, and who cares? But if he drove it to certain friends that lived in the nice neighborhood, they called my dad and was like, don't tell him to park there. They didn't want him to park it there. <laughs> wow. So that's kind of yeah. what kind of what happened. When I rolled up, the hood couldn't completely latch. The entire <laughs> Tommy boy. <laughs> <laughs> well, you could see it like it wasn't latched. And then well, on my way down there in Oklahoma <laughs> City. Did you bungee cord it? Yes, I did. <laughs> and on the way down there, Leopards, uh, leopard the duct whole tape. dashboard, <laughs> like the, the entire dash panel where the stereo was caught fire just outside of Oklahoma City. Mm-hmm. Uh, now it's so more like planes, trains, it, and automobiles. Oklahoma, Oklahoma. <laughs> it smelled like electrical fire. It was just beat up. The tires were worn down where my uncle was like, yeah. But the We're radio still works. Imagine that. No, it <laughs> With didn't. all this that, damage. Well, that <laughs> it didn't. But I, within a week, my uncle had me at a, a dealership looking for a new car. And it's so funny how certain places people really do. I walked you out know of there what? with a 95 Camaro yeah. RS. I, I didn't. Like, um, wow. I didn't have a, a rich side of the family like that, but I did something similar when my mom said that I was old enough to start buying my own shoes. I wore them until I literally had to duct tape them to my feet. And then my mom's like, fine, I'll buy you shoes. <laughs> That's a nice way of yes. making a statement. Right? I was not going to spend my hard-earned grocery bag and money on $100 Reeboks. Mm. Fuck that. That's why your parents are feds, right? So right. they can pay for shit. And that was the time when like Jordans were $125, $150. Well, I was more into the Reebok pumps. So I guess I probably had Nikes. I, yeah. I don't know. I had whatever, a pair of those. whatever Drums came after or Reeboks? Reebok pump. Yeah. yeah, whatever yeah. came after the pump. I was I was kind of a Reebok kid. I think after I that. did have a p- pair of pumps at one point. Too. And the I basketball just picture Saturday Night Live picture <laughs> pump it. <laughs> Do you remember that skit where they picked on that? And then the one where it would blow up. Or the turkey. <laughs> that was Austin Powers. <laughs> oh, that's what it was. <laughs> yeah. Yes. I just Saturday Night Live adjacent. Yeah. <laughs> Austin Powers. Ah, uh, yeah. Uh, first car for you, Matt. First car was my. My aunt bought it from my brother, and my mom bought it for me from my aunt. But it was an 86 Nissan Pulsar with the headlights that would come up, Aha. which made it look really sporty. But it was kind of like a Toyota MR2, but a little bit bigger. <laughs> He's got to show me pictures. Just a little bit bigger. <laughs> That's it's hilarious. Because the Toyota MR2 was kind of hot when I was in high school. A lot of kids had I that. had an MR2. At yeah. One I had two. I bought one for yeah. a girl. And see, I was like, that's pretty cool. Brandon's always to a That's girl. a more sporty version of the girls car that I had. Girls did a lot, or I did a lot for girls, I guess. Girls did nothing yeah. for you. <laughs> pretty much. He did a lot <laughs> for them. Uh, so that was my first car, but then I sold that for an 86 Camaro because yeah. I actually really, really wanted a 68 Camaro. Uh, I ended up with an 86 Oh, so you got the like the IROC version? No, or, or just <laughs> no. no, I got the V6 version. Oh, okay. I got a little uh, town car version of a Camaro, and it wasn't in good condition. I spent a fortune <laughs> keeping What's a that Z28? thing up. That's what I had. A Z28 is a little more. Well, it was an it's RS, a V8 it was, anyway. It, yeah, 
Here, I'll show you. Yeah. Well, family on the members year. had one of them, I remember. An 80s one? I don't know. Okay. So an 86 looked... It had to be. An 86 yeah. looked like an IROC or a Z28 more so than like the 70s ones did? Yeah, because my they graduated in 88 and they had a Z28. Yeah. Okay. So like I... That? I don't know. Kind of <laughs> like that, yeah. So I bought a piece of shit lemon... So my did you generation. have the pointy end or the front, the flat front? You're the youngest, I had a pointy too. End. Yeah, so my it was generation like is one? a catfish Camaro. Oh, no. No, I must have See, had a... I know what a Camaro is, but I don't know what a catfish Camaro is. That one. Yeah, it looked like that, but it was black, solid black, and it was a piece of shit underneath the uh Hey, my first car I body. bought was a K car. Yeah. <laughs> and that was a piece of All shit. Right, so no. that was supposed to be my pride Camaro? and joy. That was supposed to be my pride and joy, but I ended up hating the shit out of that thing. Was it an automatic? Uh, no, it Good. was a stick, Good. but it would, s- <laughs> but it would. Uh, it had fuel line issues, so on my way home, there was a stop sign that was on a downhill, and I would lose the engine would cut out every time I hit the brake for that stop sign, and I'd have to pop the clutch and run that stop uh, sign in order to get it to go again. Oh, I love stuff. <laughs> so, yeah, that thing was definitely not safe to drive. That's. Oh, Kinda. that's sharp looking, though. Which After one is that? No, but this is why they call it a catfish Camaro. I'm like, I don't know what a cat... Uh. I have, I've, <laughs> never, like so a cat. I've never I had, heard that term. I had the catfish Camaro. I didn't know that either. So, because here was the one that I had. Mine was a 98. That was like the Camaro that I idolized growing up. In like is that a 94-ish? Mid-90s the first early redevelop- I mean, it's Yeah, not the first bad. redesign. My mom had a 94 Camaro oh, when I it was new. I can see that. So, mine was white. I had a white uh-huh. with the T-tops. Mm-hmm. Oh, I love the T-tops. Yeah, T-tops were awesome. I wanted that in my MR2s. Neither one of my MR2s were T-tops. Mm. I had a blue and a white one. Uh, the white one got repoed. <laughs> Tell me that was the one for the girl. <laughs> no, well, actually, the one girl. for the girl saved my credit rating, really. Nice. Yeah, okay. she ended up paying for that, paying it off, and I ended up having to send her the title. Like th- That actually worked <laughs> out all right. But I never, <laughs> I didn't even get a kiss out of the whole oh. ordeal. Yeah. That was actually probably the last time I went above and beyond. Tammy, do girls actually like cars or do they just know we will they use just like them? Brendan buying them cars. Right. They just know that it's yeah. a weakness for some guys. Preferably this guy. Have you ever been impressed by Never. a guy with a car? Even Never. a little bit. Even in a movie. Oh, well, the only time. All right. So Corey Hayman, License to Drive. Yeah, right? I actually right. saw that movie, but no. <laughs> he had Honestly, a Cadillac. Like back. An old man Cadillac. Or the BMW no. that got all smacked or smashed Or the Ferrari at the I end. I did get oh, caught Ferrari up into the, the Grateful, De- Grateful Dead era a little bit. VW so Rabbit? I did kind of get into the Volkswagen. So if I did see little hippie guys in the Vol- uh, that would catch my eye a little in bit. In a bus or a rabbit? A bus. Okay. Because uh, like if you saw a guy in a rabbit, I would think he probably doesn't like girls. <laughs> my oh, stepbrother geez. had a rabbit. <laughs> it's not like we had a choice. The rabbit does <laughs> remind me of a dildo. I'm sorry. Whenever well, you say not, rabbit, that's all. Yeah, I can the think name of. only, not the shape of the but car. Also, <laughs> the shape of the car looks like a Hyundai that got in a front end collision. <laughs> but uh, the my engine br- sounds like a dildo too. <laughs> 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 it's got about the same horsepower. I was going to say it might actually hit the same, same engine. engine. <laughs> there might be dildos today that have a higher top speed than the rabbit. Did. <laughs> that's this true. one's running kind of rough and needs some spark plugs. <laughs> so my stepbrother had a rabbit. He's a year older than me, so he got his car first, and he would drive me places sometimes. And <laughs> of all the places to cheap out, when you hit the turn signal it didn't have an indicator left or right it just was a center light that would flash what and he was constantly hitting like the left when he wanted to turn right and the right when he wanted That's to turn left awesome because when you're just learning the logic of it it's like throw your hand to the left and you're signaling see those left. are the vehicles my dad would hand down to <laughs> us like here's your piece of shit good luck it's always amazing where car designs decide to just Fuck it. We're not putting in two you blinking lights. I have to say I appreciate it because my dad is a really hard worker. He grew up like on a farm with his family. He's a veterinarian. He did large and small animal vet. And we would get the hand-me-downs. We didn't get great cars. Like, we're not joking. Some of them had holes. Some didn't work. Some, like, <laughs> we had to keep windows down or you're fogging the there front. There might like, still be a like, rabid raccoon in this like, car. <laughs> you don't know. In the country, and we were a small town <laughs> upstate New York. He's like, just here, drive this. And if you want a car, then get a job and buy your car. Like, my dad definitely taught us the value of if you want it, earn it. So you and I think people lack that today, and they hand that over. That's where well, some of our hand me cars kids don't are. happen because honestly, All, most people, even my siblings hand me down. Well, I look at some friends of ours who like, or the hand me cars are like, 
we buy a new car after two years. There so we go. So that's a what high I, school kid yeah. is getting like a new Audi or what yeah. I would consider new. Any like kid that'll be buying brand brand new the two year old car. These are like the hand me down cars for high school kids now. I would say any high school yeah, kid that has true. a car from this century can go to hell. <laughs> I we mean, your first car has got to be older than you, right? That <laughs> that's I'm the, like, uh, that's, that's how it works. I didn't have a hand in how my daughter got her first car, but her first <laughs> car was a brand new car. Oh, yeah. And See? I wasn't really thrilled about how her mom went about it. But her mom also sat there and said, look, you have to pay the insurance and gas. My child support payments were paying the car payment. Oh, <laughs> yeah. and that's weirdly, free money. Like, I, mean, it kinda, it, I mean, it was smart on her mom's end, but... It was also kind of like, well, now she's gone to college and she's can't take the car. She can't take the car. And yeah. Who's paying for it? Because I'm not paying child support no more. It's kind of I understand where the mom was coming from with the oh, I hear that all the time. But, but it's the most it's the safety features. The I want my it, precious yeah. angel to be safe. And you see the commercials where these cars literally let you text and drive and they'll just tell you when you're about to murder yourself with the crossing the lane. Yeah, there's that. That is not OK. You should always have to be vigilant because you should know that that car Ain't gonna fucking stop you from yeah. killing You're yourself. You're still controlling. I was taught how car. to do tire. I mean, like change tire. My like my dad taught me how to like. I think for her it was that she was going to school at one of the like. One of the higher reputable and high schools where almost everybody there did have their parents oh, buy them it cars. It builds and character. I think it, part I'm of getting it you was a gremlin like just she because did of have that. a job. That's what it I'm builds saying. character. Part of it was that she had a job, and she your mom did. didn't. Her mom jobs. didn't want her to yeah. drive her anymore, so it took <laughs> that away. So, like, drive your fucking self. Oh. I your was car. I was not popular in I high school. Take and the that bus in college to my <laughs> part time job. Yeah. Dude, kudos to you. I still couldn't take the bus. We either. lived in the country, so Brenda like, drove the bus. He wasn't supposed to, but uh, he stole the. <laughs> we didn't keys. even have cable. <laughs> he lived out oh, in like the east first time I ever. You did the first time I ever stole a car. Which weirdly, now that I think about it, I've done it three times. Stole a car. It was my parents. Parents' van. I was mm-hmm. in junior high. That's not really stealing. I borrowed the van in junior high and drove behind the We've school bus, waving at all the car. kids like, "Hey, hey, hey! Fuck you! I'm driving. You're on the bus." And then, of course, by lunchtime, the principal of the junior high called my dad and asked if I was allowed to drive to school. And hearing you that, knew that your dad worked in the building you were well, going. Not, I know, right? isn't that funny? I'm like, <laughs> you get caught high. because they know oh, him. High, okay. So I was at I was at Huron uh, at this time. My God. dad was still at Thornton, so I was an eighth grader and drove to school. And somebody must and this is fucking chance because one of my buddies was like in trouble at the principal's office and heard them call my dad. So when he left, he's like, yo, they called your dad. He's you might want to get home. Because there's so no cell phones now. I ended up driving the van back home, parking it in the same spot, putting the keys back away. I had all gotten away with it. It's like Bear, who was it? Not roll the odometer yeah. back. The well, I drove him backwards. Well, Make thankfully, sure that my dad didn't check odometers or anything. But what he did do is he put his hand on the hood. Mm-hmm. It was still warm. Oh, yeah. That's what gave it away. Yeah. If my dad had not thought to put the hand on the hood, <laughs> I'd have freaking gotten away with it. And that was actually technically the first time I think I had borrowed a car that I, I borrowed have. my dad's car before. <laughs> I borrowed my stepdad's blazer once because yep. uh, I was getting an alarm put into my Camaro. So I, they called and said, well, you have to sign this thing or we can't go forward. So I had to, no choice but to borrow my stepdad's blazer while he was out at work. We had a blazer. So I like big vehicles. Is that the one that rolled on you? Yeah, my mom flipped it. I've never rode a car. And it's so funny because back, she picked me up from ice. We were ice skating, and we were coming home, and she hit black ice, and it rolled. And all I remember is hitting, like, rolling on my mom, rolling on the ceiling, rolling. And we didn't wear seatbelts back then. It's funny. I never remember rolling on your mom. I know. (laughs) Even I did. It was a thing to do, apparently. (laughs) But, like, we landed on our side. And an ambulance was driving by and gave us a ride home. But neither of us got hurt, which is kind of crazy because we did Five hundred dollars right? later. Talk about freaking chance! <laughs> like yeah. the car was totaled. My ice skates, I lost them. <laughs> they went out the window. Oh, but I remember shit. coming that home and calling my friend. We just right? rolled the car. That could have decapitated you. Yeah. <laughs> well, I was probably like 14, 13. And I was like, my ice skates, where are they? You could be in the Guinness Book of World Records right now if you had been the first person decapitated in a car accident by your own ice skates. 
Hmm. It could be. Rob. What a oh, man! This just Damn, got let's sad. roll it back. Yeah. And do it over. Speaking of roll back, Marco, what was your first car? My first car in high car. school was a hand-me-down. It was my mom's minivan. You had a minivan. It was a '95. Oh, you win. And, and I didn't even. I, did, I didn't even. I didn't That's even have to any like. That's worse than any meter. Well, the Aerostar is what I stole. We had yeah. an Aero. Astro I didn't man. even have to live that van life. I didn't get to. I didn't get to do that. Uh, would you have wanted to? Then you could still. Well, vans can be fun. I feel you like can pile a bunch of your right friends now, in. Maybe. Yeah. Be about that van. We're life. going to a show. Get in, guys. So, but fun <laughs> fact <laughs> about that car: that '95 Windstar had the same engine as the Mustang, <laughs> so it could it could pull. And I was a hooligan high school kid, so I pushed that to its limits and did all the handbrake turns and all that. <laughs> did you ever b- pin the needle? Um, not in that car. I did, wo- <laughs> I, I did <laughs> once on my preface, Camaro. That's That's some foreshadowing. Yeah, you got to in a Camaro. But my Camaro, the, the odometer, or the speedometer, only went up to 85, which is what? fucking lame. So I, we went up to Cheyenne one time. Yeah, those 80s cars, you could pin the needle. I know, easy. right? And it was a V6. Means. It means the needle can't go any further. It hits but the so stopping point. you don't point. even know how fast you're going. No, but we, you have to go by time now. So we're going I-25 north to Cheyenne, which is a very straight line. It's completely and straight. And I just floored it. And we probably pinned the needle and went another two minutes until it felt like it wasn't going any faster. And then we slowed down. <laughs> but I would guess 110, 115. That sounds about it, right. Yeah, because my Camaro's speedometer stopped at 120. Mm-hmm. And I couldn't get it to 120. Yeah. Like, it got to, like, 100, 105-ish, 110-ish. And, yeah. and, and I just couldn't. And I was actually going through Kansas on that one. Oh, that's even which better. Which is another straight line. Yeah, less cars, the too. The funniest probably. bit was is in that truck, that 91 s- s- truck. Like the, It was one of those weird, like, leveler gauges that kind of, like, it, it, it's hard to explain, but there was a cutout, and there was this blue bit that kind of went where your, your speed was, and it stopped at 90. Well, when I pegged that one, not only did it stop at 90, it started going back around the other way. <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> they, put, they put a pin on there. You got to have a pin. So it actually started kind of like, yeah. it looked like I was going about 30 miles an hour <laughs> when I was probably going about 110. I could go faster in that truck, I felt like, than I could in that Camaro. I think there was a Simpsons where he was filling up, a, for some reason, he was filling up a big camper or a truck or something, and he was at $999.99, and it went over to zero, 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 and he's like, free gas! <laughs> <laughs> oh, God, I wish. I've spent definitely over $100 on a tank of gas before. The, I mean, that truck, when the, our diesel I've never truck, a vehicle. when we would go to New York, we definitely would spend... Hundred dollars on a tank of gas. <laughs> oh sure, but I it's also a point of pride for me to spend the least amount as possible well, on my car. Well, and could gas you remember, now. like, I mean, late nineties? So I remember having the Camaro and being in Texas and paying eighty nine cents, ninety cents, ninety one uh, cents yeah, a freaking gallon. I remember it being eighty eight before I left Colorado. Yeah. God, I miss those days. That well, was I moved also to a ten dollar or not ten dollar ten cent cheeseburger at McDonald's. Yeah. I know we sound like that guy. Nine cent gas. There was, a, the there was a place right, called the right. 10 cent cheeseburger stand or hamburger stand. Hamburger or stand. Yeah. Yes, they were the ones that did that. Yeah. There was one right by our high school. No one would go to it. My mom <laughs> took me there once, said it was disgusting, would never take me there again. <laughs> I don't remember them. It was kind of like White Castle, though, wasn't it? Oh, White Castle. Yeah, actually. Were they I like went sliders? to my first yeah. White Castle, what, two you years did. ago? Yes, and? Well, it Steam was White camps. Castle. <laughs> I've, never been to, I've never been to a brick and mortar, but I've had the frozen ones. It's a special treat in my house. But you said you've never pinned your, your I don't, needle. I've ne- well, my stepdad. I think maybe it's a girl. I don't. I, fast wasn't a thing. I did sneak the cars out at certain times and went somewhere. My stepdad told but me a story once where he fast. took his mom's car, and she was a very you know upper class rich lady who only drove it to church kind of thing. Oh no! <laughs> and he took her car out one time, and he floored it to impress his friends or a girl or so floored it and because it had never actually been floored before it stuck oh no. and he was like he was like reached out with his hand to pull the the gas pedal Ooh. off of the floor but that's got to be the scariest thing yeah <laughs> and it was some kind of cadillac it that had never scary. gone more than 25 so and it's for life. us as girls we were just like oh i want this and we were crave something and we were just get in the car and take it it wasn't about like i want to go 100 and like 
Where we would the do one thing nobody th- wanted? Brendan's virginity. But we could get a ride to the hamburger ch- stand. <laughs> He'll take us anywhere. <laughs> He'll steal a truck by a truck. <laughs> you never know what car he's going to show up. One time it was a city bus, I swear to God. <laughs> it it's like got a motor and a gas pedal. <laughs> it's starting to turn into a used car ad. Brendan will steal a truck, buy a truck, buy your girlfriend a truck. I think they need a new Shagman down at Rocky's. <laughs> I think Shagman fits you a little better than it fits him. <laughs> <laughs> Might be. If only I had put that kind of resume together when they needed the guy. <laughs> It'd be kind of funny to the shagless oh, man. The shagless to fall. man. The shagless man. <laughs> you just keep getting taken advantage of by women in all these used cars as a car commercial. That would only be, be the fun. epitome of a used car dealer on probably Broadway. <laughs> all the little mama. Well, Colfax cars, has yeah. some fly by night places too. Yeah, they might. The first car I technically bought was this 94 Mitsubishi Gallant. The shittiest car ever. Bought it for 500 bucks. It ran for about two weeks. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, wow. So Ironic. When the car stops running, you start walking. Wait, so does that mean like officially bought, meaning no cosigner for parents, no, like this was all on your own money? Mine was the K car. K car. Now you got to be. We may as well talk about that K car now. (laughs) I had to look it up because I just called it a fucking K car, but it was a Chrysler K platform, but it didn't go above uh, 45 because it sat, I bought it from a great aunt who never drove it. So it just sat and got like mouse poop in it. (laughs) Squirrels probably. Yeah. And I'm like, by the time I got it, it wouldn't go very fast. It was a piece of shit. Mm. Could still probably beat that Mitsubishi in a drag race. <laughs> it's pretty bad <laughs> when I would go honest. to high school and I felt like people were running by me faster. And I'm like, yeah, but if, I'll be there. I'll meet you there. Yeah, bye. So if you had a million dollars, would if you buy a K car? Never. A nice Reliant automobile? But you know what I Nice say? line from the uh, Bare Naked Ladies. Yeah, yeah, it's the only thing that I've ever heard of a K car. Oh. I assumed it was some Canadian monstrosity nope. that it was kind of like the Edson. That oh, just failed in the, the Canadian Edson, Edson or I'm something? I'm sure they're good cars, but she just let it set. But my first... I bought a Cavalier when I graduated a high crap-a-lier? school. A Crapalier? A Crapalier. But can I tell you, it was the best Crapalier ever. It was a four-cylinder, so it didn't have the pickup. We'd call it a four-banger, yeah. But the four-banger, yeah. it was a stick, and I taught myself stick, and I, I oh, love yeah. it for all because jet. now I love... Hey, Marco, can you drive a stick? Kind of. Oh. Without stalling I it, love probably not. Manual okay. cars. They're my favorite. <laughs> All right. Can you stop Time to con- learn to drive the mini? Can you stop with confidence on a slight incline and a Do stick? Do you teach him on the mini <laughs> no. or the Jeep? <laughs> Honestly, after driving the two, I think learning on the Jeep think, might be better. But I do know the handbrake the is a thing, though, so I'll at mm. least protect the person behind me. There you go. So the mini's got a sport clutch, and if you don't time it right, so we have two like sticks now. Hundred. Jeeps, I love Jeeps, so like I love. Big, so I we have the Jeep and the mini, but. I love stick shift. I think the mini would be easier to teach. You think the Jeep? I tried to teach Sora, and, and yeah, I mean, I guess, this a, yeah, yeah, come on. For know. reference, Sora drives stick better than I do, <laughs> based on that video. <laughs> <laughs> Are we talking cars? We're still, I hope we're I'm still talking kidding, cars. I'm just kidding. I'm uh, kidding. But also, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, oh, I was gonna totally. I I got derailed on that whole topic, oh, but there was something we're there. I was cars. gonna go off of, on the oh. First car I actually ever bought with my own cash without a cosigner. <laughs> not your ill-gotten cash. <laughs> 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 Legally, not right, right? taking my dad's identity. <laughs> <laughs> Was our van. Oh, really? Yeah. Because my Pathfinder my dad had cosigned for. And we traded in that Pathfinder for that van. Oh, yeah. We should tell sad stories. Like, How recent was this? This was the first. Actually, a lot. It was the first purchase we ever really kind of made together. Because I was like 22 when I bought my first. Well, actually. Oh wait, 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 wait. The K car. Nope. I was in high school. Hold up, hold up. I, I forgot. I had a. I there was a brief stint that that Accord that I had that blue Accord. But I had two jobs in high school. So, it was it was money that came to me from my grandfather passing and whatnot, and it was what actually got me out of Florida in my situation. My parents were like, "Here you go." This is grandfather's inheritance. It's sad when old people have to die to get us out of Florida. Right? <laughs> Especially when Florida's where the old people be. It's ironic, um, I know. Yeah, no, it was a 95 Accord I ended up buying. But technically, that wasn't my own money. But 
like as an adult adult when we bought that van that was the first time that like i didn't have to rely on parents or backup money or anything and so when you talk about van life i loved that van and it was a nice conversion van it it i put tvs in the front and the back of it did a lot like playstation it was, it, you could <laughs> yes you could play Bachi, and, and, uh, we had a, it did get to a <laughs> point massager. where i think that like sora might have been there's pushing. a hot tub back there you never been in it, <laughs> it, it, it carpeting. It, it was when the kids started pushing preteen Mirrored that ceilings. i started feeling like i was can't the creep- be the creepy van exactly. guy exactly you took the words right out of my mouth i didn't want he to be the candy creepy van. at least he had windows side. creepy <laughs> van has no windows yeah. <laughs> Which is, I have a cousin of mine and one of his friends, they kind of have the van life and they'll tag it on their Instagram van life and whatnot. And I'm like, you guys are young enough now, but when you have a daughter like I did, at some point you'll realize your van life is no longer it's something worth yeah. bragging about. Yeah. retire. Yeah. It's, it, it becomes creepy old man van life. Or you become <laughs> Chris Farley van life. Yeah. Van exactly. down by the river. Yeah. And, and we might be camper <laughs> life at some point. Yeah. We'll be the camper by I mean, the river. We'll, <laughs> I would happily live in the RV at some point years down the road, and whether it's by a river or a lake or whatever, that'd be a different story. But <laughs> living out of something <laughs> sad by rivers. <laughs> yeah. The lake is glorious, but the river, <laughs> yeah, no. Somebody at my work. It's like you're digging a grave there. And parks a sprinter van that I think is a camper. And I look at it every single morning, and I'm like, that was a compromise. <laughs> it's like, yeah, this is we, what happens we when can, we need to buy this camper. It's like, what are we going to do with it? You can also drive it to work. <laughs> or it's it's when you get a divorce and can't afford yeah, rent. That, that was where Ooh, I was. Yeah. That's also a compromise. Yeah, when you said that was a compromise, that was the but first when you're thing driving a camper to work. Does he have a tan line around there's, this there's finger? Some, <laughs> there's Indentation? some compromise in there somewhere. There's a backstory Slight there. Slight cut marks around this area <laughs> here. <laughs> Every morning, I want to know the backstory to somebody driving the camper as their commuter car. There's, there's a backstory yeah, there. There is a backstory, for sure. <laughs> Almost every morning, well, it comes in phases. Somewhere on the 36 I 25 interchange, there will be a van with a Tommy Gate lift parked on the <laughs> shoulder. And it'll be there for days, maybe a week. And then it'll disappear for two weeks. And then it'll be back for a week or two. And I think somebody partially lives on the shoulder of the highway. Oh, yeah. He's on the, the interchange of 36. At the well, you can't even walk anywhere from there. It's, it's right where 36 will merge onto I 25 underneath. The overpass, mm. and you would have to. It would be a treacherous walk to get to any surface street from that point. I think he thinks that that's a place the police don't notice you, mm. and will not have you towed. But every Wrong. couple of weeks, he just lives there. I think for a while, and then disappears. And it's been going on for years because I drive that way every yeah, single morning. Is. That's no, well, that is interesting. Um, well, even if you were to live out of your camper, not campsites on the are, shoulder I mean, if you of paid a highway, weekly to mon- yeah, I mean, that's like, rough, man. That's, yeah, that's, right. that's that's living yeah. dangerously as it is. So I think if you're on one highway or the other, the police will notice you. But if you're on an interchange, does he go to Walmart in between? Where does he go? He goes somewhere. Yeah, you could stay in a parking lot at Walmart for a while. They won't question you. Well, Walmart started certain. cracking down. Yeah. I was, I was Some of say them. certain. Some and of them. High you'd volume You'd almost ones. have to go to rest areas, maybe. I don't know. I'm just thinking when we travel, you could, like, I'm just yeah. looking one of the truckers. You could go to neighborhoods if you move every 72 hours. No one's no. going to legally have any thing to do with you. They can't. And <laughs> be like Christmas vacation and empty your sewer. The shitter was full. Shitter was full. <laughs> <laughs> Eventually, that shitter's full. But this is just a van. It doesn't have a shitter. Oh, yeah. It's got a Who Folgers knows? can. Who knows? vans could have shitters. <laughs> <laughs> Shitting in a Folgers can. That's where we go that's, to. That's, that's, that's going to be the flower the pot for the new, for the new, <laughs> for the new bus. <laughs> the I make my own manure. Full. So do we pause and get refills, or do we try I to do wrap this to up? Pee. I'm for pausing and getting refilled. Okay, sure. let's pause and refill. Be right back, guys. All right, and we are back now. Um, refills in, beers in. We're we're definitely getting there. So, to uh, finish off this second end of the the cast, let's uh, move it a little bit forward. Marco has a a story. Marco's story. Yes. About since I've taken uh, t- taken up a bit with my little escapade about pinning the needle. 
<laughs> yeah, so I pinned the needle in the car I currently drive, which is also... The first car you drove? That's just sad. <laughs> yeah. I feel like that car is technically the first one I bought because I don't count the crappy Mitsubishi. <laughs> because that doesn't technically... <laughs> Because it it's only, not technically a car. In this it, it was more of a rental, if it you think about yeah, it. It was a very expensive uh, <laughs> temporary rental. It was the rental. shittiest rental right. ever. Which, this it, car is now a Ford... Ford Focus. Focus. Yeah. I like to make up names. For some for reason, I always wanted that car growing up. Really? I don't know why. You, you know what? I always wanted a Mitsubishi 3000 GT, and now that's just pathetic to want that. <laughs> They but that was like my none realistic in good condition anymore. car growing up that I wanted. My dream car is like a, a Porsche. Well, there's a lot of iterations of Porsche. Yeah, Be more specific. there's some cheap Porsches that I could probably own yeah, in my lifetime. Yeah, the 70s Porsches. You could probably have Brendan steal you one tonight. <laughs> <laughs> but also the one I grew up was the Boxster everyone yeah, wanted. And yeah. I feel like I could buy a Boxster now because they're all kind of... One of the older ones, yeah, the ones that... They're like, all kind of yeah. crappy now, and they have a problem with the IMS bearing, mm. which we don't think about when we're thinking about our dream car is about maintenance yes. problems. That's the only thing I knew as a, about Jaguar as a kid was that they spend a lot of time in the shop, according to sitcoms. Well, that's yeah, that's a British car for you. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I guess I guess an Aston Martin and, uh, and the in Lotus. a Land Rover. And a Lotus uh, yeah. is British? Yes. yes. Okay. Yes, that okay. is the, lo- the Lotus is kind of like the... That's actually one of the more reliable British cars, and it's still... <laughs> Kind of <laughs> yes. Yeah, he's he's kind of right there. So I know Clarkson loves the Aston Martin, and he's the only one. He defends it to the death. Yeah, the good old Top Gear, man. Kind of missed that bit. So, your story. So, anyways, the uh, Focus is like the first car I bought. And, um, I guess. Kind of same, same thing when I first bought it as... When I first started driving the Windstar, I wanted to thrash the hell out of it. You and Ford, <laughs> huh? And I did. And um, I was in college... I think I bought it junior year, and I met a girl from study abroad. I was like, oh, I have a car now. First thing I'm going to do is take a road trip to California. And study abroad. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> I had a mouthful of beer, but that was literally what I was thinking, too. A uh, 20-hour drive, a lot of... It's a boring 20-hour drive from Colorado to California. Well, it's pretty until you leave Colorado. Pretty um, much. There's some good parts yeah. in Wyoming, which is a segue. Oh, you took, Wait, you you took, took the I-80. Wyoming route. Yeah, you yeah. got to take I-70 just for your mental well, health. Well, it was, it was NorCal, so oh, okay. I feel like oh, mental health is... Yeah. Eh, mental health. Nevada is a grind, though, when you're doing that. Is drive. it? Because that's yeah. the one state I haven't really, like... you got to be careful yeah. cutting and through that part of Nevada. And there's no cell signal either and it's for, known like, as, all of yeah, Nevada. It's known as the weird. loneliest highway in the world because there's, like, no gas stations. you got to be real careful. Yeah, you got to get sure gas, you have enough gas at right. the border. Yeah, you will be Otherwise, you in will a lot of trouble. Yeah. yeah. Do they Holy have shit. signs to prepare you? They don't. You just got to... <laughs> they gotta, don't. I had my uncle. It seems like they would... Oh, yeah. My cousin was in the Navy in Fallon, Nevada, so my uncle warned me. You better get gas before I'm you get on that highway. I'm warn you, because when we were in Hawaii and we were going up, they would actually warn you on certain areas when we were doing the and volcano trip to say get gas. this was 2007, so I think I had GPS at that point, and that's how I knew to get gas. Because ah. I'm like, oh, there's not a stop for like three, 400 miles, which mm-hmm. is like a whole tank of gas. So, yeah. Yep. Wow. And you'd think enough people would have so that's where you pegged the, gas. The, the, the needle? I oh, no, that's the, a windy No, I pinned the windy needle road in uh, western Wyoming. Oh, no. Um, yeah. No, oh, don't oh, no. do that. And there was a whoop, whoop. Yeah, state trooper. <laughs> and I found out the hard way that if you're speeding that much over the speed limit in Wyoming. How much over? Did you actually get a reading? Um, I think it, w- it was... Did he tell I you... I the needle. Did the officer I tell you how fast you were going? he told me, like, 119. Nice. Yeah. <laughs> and a Ford Focus, which you is almost, pretty good. You, yeah. must have been, you must have been going with the wind, which is unusual. It was downhill, too, <laughs> yeah, to be that's fair. It, that's okay. it. Yeah. Which but. also I probably mentioned in my court hearing. <laughs> court? Oh. There was court. Yeah, was so apparently court. in Wyoming... If you go that much over the speed limit, it's not a ticket. It's not a fine. It's a jail sentence. Now, in, Wy- in that part of Wyoming, it's an 80-mile-per-hour speed limit, though, isn't it? 
Or is it 75? Yeah, I think it was an I 80. just did that drive two weeks ago. It's either 75 or 80. 75 or 80. But they do have 80s in Wyoming. And, like, this cop is super hot under the collar, being, like, putting so many people in danger. I'm like, we're in the middle of nowhere. It's Wyoming. I'm putting more people in danger going 10 over in a 30 mile in Denver. But go off. <laughs> Hannibal Burress, my desire to not spend any more time in your shitty state. Yeah, so I did I kind of true. have that Hannibal Burress <laughs> attitude, which probably didn't help me. And also being a brown person in Wyoming probably didn't help me. So I had to go. Mm, a diverse podcast <laughs> we are. I had to go to a court date two weeks later, which is when the semester started again. So I had How to fast take did a, you drive back to Wyoming to your court date? I was, just, like I was pretty, I was pretty careful. <laughs> And <laughs> the judge actually took that into account. <laughs> it's like you had to drive all the way back to Wyoming along that same road. It's um, like, I, so I don't have a choice. Tough, I was I'm appointed judge in this shithole, but you came back voluntarily. I appreciate that. You could have done this all by mail. Ticket. Yeah, and you could tell over. the the well, um, district attorney in in the middle of Wyoming was like super try hard. <laughs> Like well, you got to think about it. They don't super have try a hard. Lot of yeah, he he doesn't have anything better to do with yeah. his life. So he's the he's most all fa- watching too many town. special victims unit episodes or yeah. whatever. And you're like, dude, this is a speeding ticket. Like super w- troopers, whatever. So <laughs> it's like me going pro se against this Wyoming district attorney, and I got the sentence reduced. <laughs> oh, well, there's um, that. So I still had to go to jail, but it was like a couple hours. Like basically, what to, did you do in jail? Show me a. Le- they gave me free they food and you straight. <laughs> and I watched TV and I was like, "Oh, this is how you get is institutionalized. <laughs> Where you the- <laughs> get free food and get to watch TV for two hours." I was like, "I'm gonna start committing more crimes." Were you the only one in jail in Wyoming? <laughs> I was the only one. In jail. <laughs> <laughs> they didn't even have an Otis who woke up drunk and let himself out of the cell. You sure I think, look pretty over I th- there. <laughs> <laughs> I think they did have a general population, quote unquote with it being like a town of like 300 people <laughs> that they did separate me from because they knew I was like city yes. boy, college boy. The irony is the jail is outside of the bars. <laughs> <laughs> you were actually safe. They were <laughs> saving you from the locals. Oh, yeah. Man. It's so like, did you ever see The Hills Have Eyes? Because I just thought of that. Oh, mm-hmm. no. But now I'm not going to watch that. <laughs> that has to be set in Wyoming. <laughs> but yeah, be. that's the Marco pinning the needle and going to jail story. Well, you got to add the Wyoming in there. That's all the more... Yeah. yeah, Wyoming kind of like takes the bite out of. I that mean, if story. you think about all the it's people, it's more of like man. a party story, and if like sometimes the girls are like, "Oh, you're a bad boy." If you think and about it, like, and then oh, their clothes fell off. That, that's not a. That's if you think cool about story. it, Wait, Wyoming dropped when you <laughs> told that story. <laughs> they have before. All right. If, if you think about this country, moist. <laughs> moist. I didn't even have to buy a girl a car. You just tell her the <laughs> Wyoming jail story. Man. <laughs> Lesson learned, Brendan. <laughs> Twenty years. Behind. There you go, Brendan. You go to jail, you'll get some action. Yeah. Says you did Marco. It all wrong. <laughs> but if you think about it, Florida Keys, Hawaii, Wyoming is way more exotic than that in this country. Most people have never been to Wyoming. You've been to jail in Wyoming. I feel like anyone who's lived in Florida, I just assume they went to jail. But not Wyoming. <laughs> Maybe if they went to Wyoming hey. once in a while, they'd straighten up. <laughs> I didn't go to jail. I may have been a part of an FBI raid, but I was handcuffed I on was, the sidewalk. It was full <laughs> on Those prison. are the feds, though. Those are the super cops. I was actually watching the Michael Vick <laughs> documentary oh, a couple Michael days ago. Vick. He's like, the cops are one thing, but the feds are something else. <laughs> Well, yeah, oh, that's just words, meaning things. He's gross. Michael Vick? What, is he gross or just the dog thing bothers you? I would rather... He's reformed, though, but that situation was gross. That's the only thing How I know about him. How can you do that to an animal? It's a culture thing. Some people do. I'd rather him eat him than fight him. Sadly, it is a culture thing I've had. <laughs> I've She's like, speaking of cultures and dogs. Well, I understand. I mean, food chain and that kind of yeah. stuff. But to actually like have that horrible like fight for money or whatever is disgusting. Cock fighting? Any kind. What's funny is somebody in Vic's posse was like, if you have a horse and it loses a race, what do you do to the horse? <laughs> and the, the reporter's like, nothing. <laughs> nothing. You put it away and feed it and treat it well. He's like, no, you get rid of it. Yeah. I was like, what is it, wrong with you, dude? And he's like somebody in, Mi- in Michael Vick's posse. So he's not the actual athlete. So by his own logic, is like, 
you're not the athlete, so what do we do with you? <laughs> yeah, like, exactly. We get rid go. of you. <laughs> You didn't because you aren't making the money. You yeah. aren't winning the games. <laughs> so you didn't. You didn't make the team. You're just so. in his posse, <laughs> like holding you're on. You're just a part of the entourage, <laughs> yeah. motherfucker. You'll be forgotten, like next episode. The only reason anyone you're, knows who he you're is not even is because he's Piven. <laughs> right? Yeah. That, yeah, you picked up on yeah. that. Yeah. yeah, yeah. It's like I don't know who you are, but you ain't even Jeremy Piven. <laughs> <laughs> you should all be at least Jeremy Piven. I, I could get. Whatever through. happened to him? Piven? Yeah. Uh, there was some shit against I know he's him, an, and then yeah, he's he got, got a, caught up in that. First, I know he's was one he of the more too? hated. I yeah. don't know, but he's one of the more hated people in Hollywood. Yeah. I just he, heard he was a dick. I don't know. I love PCU, so I. Don't, I do too. That's I don't. Why I, don't I don't really. Me. I don't know anything else about him. His, other than he was his awesome role in, PCU. in Entourage was pretty funny. I never even saw it. Yeah, that was pretty funny. The first three seasons are worth. I hate when someone that you think is hilarious on any movie or show. Becomes an asshole. Kevin Spacey is another one. I loved him. He's yeah, a little more than an asshole. Yeah, he gave off creepy vibes <laughs> yeah. before all that. So everyone, when it happened, they were like, mm, uh, that, makes that makes sense. He was creepy before it happened? Yeah, a little bit. Really? Well, I didn't think so either, Tam. I, 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 I go by Sandra Bullock a little bit because I, I love like her. American and she Beauty would talk was a lot of method of acting, and how funny let's put he it was. that way. <laughs> See, I felt like he had that alpha bit to him. Like Kevin? Yeah. Maybe because of his shows, not him. It's just picking up on what I can. What kind of car did he have in that movie, American <laughs> Beauty? Wasn't it a Trans remember. Am or a Firebird or something? Like oh. his dream car from when he was a kid, from when he was a teenager? You got that a, would tell it all, right? He got a there. job in a fast food restaurant and he bought, like, a. Because I rule. <laughs> <laughs> he, like, he traded in the Camry or something for, an, for, a, for a Firebird. Hmm. Because I rule. <laughs> I remember. I, I remember the I rule. That was a great right, movie. So bringing it back to cars, though, and you mentioned it, dream cars. We all have them. Oh yeah. Well, what you know, are it's they? Funny. You know, it's funny. I was thinking about this podcast, and I don't know cars, and I have no passion for cars yeah. anymore. But I was like, you know, it'd be funny is I did have a big collection of Hot Wheels. Maybe I come in this thing with a whole bunch of knowledge about Hot Wheels. And it turns out that the first Hot Wheel ever produced was a 68 Camaro. And I'm like, that's Whoa. the car I wanted when I was in high school before I stopped caring about cars. My 86 Camaro made me stop caring about cars. Uh, but that 68 Camaro probably would have been my dream car. I wouldn't get one now. I think it depends on what I drive. I don't right think it's now. about the shape or the vehicle. But like, I'm like, eh, car's a car. And like, exactly. e- even my mom had, uh, she was obsessed with bugs because that was her first car when she grew up as a Volkswagen bug and I was like it's a fucking bug they're not that great I mean they're tiny and then they got one with the like well this is an engine like a race driver and it has the little what is that little thing that comes out at the back it's got a turbo turbo no they said it had a race whatever but that thing could speed up like we live in the country but we're on a street that's 55 when you come out and you really like literally can. Literally turning out of their driveway, you got to be a fifty. Because we're one of the main quick. routes to Buffalo, so like, but we're it's in the country, route. so it's crazy. It's kind of weird because you're like, there's no houses around us, but you better get out of that parking <laughs> your driveway, yeah. fuck, fucking fast. And her little bug did, and then I was like, oh shit, this is fast, <laughs> and it was fun. It was Herbie. It was it Herbie. It was Herbie. Yeah. It, it but it wasn't the most was... comfortable. It's not like my favorite styly looking car, but it was fucking fast. It was nice. Yeah, I pinned it. <laughs> I'm just kidding. So is that a <laughs> is that a dream car of yours? No, Bug? no, Herbie. never. I feel like Herbie's her dream car. Herbie, I just want a car that understands me. Maybe it's Bumblebee. Uh, is that which a, is iteration? He a Charger? Which iteration? Well, he was a uh, he was a Mustang, you, and then he was uh, no, he was a Camaro. But see, originally, if he you was see a the bum- Bumblebee movie, that's before he turned Camaro. He was a bug. Yeah, he started the movie as one thing, then I fell yeah. asleep, and he was something else. Yeah, well, I think at the I'm end more of, the movie, of a at SUV At the very person. end, he turns into the Camaro, and she's like, are you kidding me? You could have been a Camaro this whole time? What the fuck? My favorite <laughs> first I'm an alien. I don't know your dumb, arbitrary shit. Right? <laughs> I traded my crapelier into a Pathfinder. I can't remember what year it was, and that would probably be my favorite vehicle that I bought. <clears throat> prior to what but we But you don't have a dream car? Or are you driving it now <laughs> with the Jeep? <laughs> right now, my... My Jeep's probably, yeah. Right now, my dream car is the one that starts every time I turn the key. That's true. <laughs> don't fail me I now. have... I, I, I buy the cheapest, most economical cars I can afford. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then my sad story is that I'm 42, and just last year I bought my first car with power windows and power door locks. 
My first time ever. I didn't have air conditioning, and I don't know what I was thinking. Yeah. I was like, I just want the cheapest thing, and I hate to be hot. And I'm like, I'll never again do that. <laughs> I've always kind of wanted a handful of different cars, but one that has always stuck with me that I would still love to see in my garage is a 69 Dodge Charger. 69. If I had all the money in the world, it would be a... Yeah, a, mine wouldn't be with cars. I think it would be an Audi S... MSX or something like that, only because I, <laughs> I had to cover for work a big, huge chain reaction crash, and that car had all kinds of airbags and all kinds of safety features, and I'm like, well, I'd feel safe in that. So Acura or Audi MSX, oh, whatever it was. Oh, the it's MSX, kind of a, that's an Acura. Yeah, it's kind of a midsize SUV, yep, all-wheel yep, drive. Yep. Like it's the, the safety features that I saw deployed in that crash made me single that car out. Is like, that's the one I would choose if I had all the money in the world. So, yeah, I wouldn't make payments on it, but I would buy it outright, <laughs> and then I would have it forever. Well, so I feel like with cars, there's kind of an element of never meet your heroes, because another one of mine growing up was an Audi A4, which I have now as my project car, <laughs> and it's kind of a piece of shit. That's my, pr- <laughs> oh, <laughs> that's See, was, my prelude, man. I was I, never mechanically inclined enough to want a project I car. A Batmobile. Well... I'd so, like to be mechanically inclined. I just have not. Oh, well, I thought not. I was. Yeah. I, and, I, and I had worked on Hondas for a brief period in time. And that's one of the reasons why I told or t- convinced Tam, like, hey, look, this prelude. Mm-hmm. I know it's going to need some work at some point, And then as sure as shit, when it does, it's beyond me. Yeah, I and tried to. I it's, tried. it's fuck, man. It was this, turned beyond me from like two weeks after we bought it. I tried to work on my 86 Camaro. I tried to replace <laughs> the starter. My stepdad once informed me that I was an idiot. That's a quote. And then I took it to a mechanic and had them do it for me. Oh, and man. they told you you were an idiot also. <laughs> Although wild. I have to say, as much as I don't they know about wrong. cars, what it, the prelude, I have never, I don't understand the prelude. But <laughs> even when I'm next to it, people ask us, I'll buy it. And I'm like, you want this? Like, I've never had a vehicle where people, like, leave. They've, we've had stickers left on our vehicle saying, if you want to sell this. I, had it, I was here at Frolic drinking, waiting for a tow person because I couldn't drive it because it fucking died. And, you and the drinking. tow guy, and I was drinking, <laughs> which is, I wasn't drinking. I was You're drinking. Totally going to flirt <laughs> with the, the tow, tow guy. guy I, I was drinking enough I could drive, though. Even the tow guy was asking me how much I will buy this. I'm like... You're towing our vehicle, and you're gonna buy it. I feel like with the prelude, th- it's about the lines. It's about how I don't it know looks. what it is because, like, like I said, end. I don't yeah. know. That rear end. Yes, on it's the prelude. It, it's it is get- fun to drive. I'll give it that because it has the speed and the pickup, whatever. <laughs> but the mini does. Imagination too. time is fun. But, but I it's think half <laughs> pink. It's not even fully red. <clears throat> this car is. Yeah. <laughs> I, th- I think when somebody is towing a car and then asking how much you'd part yeah, with it, the I, tow I think guy is asking me. I think he's estimating four or five hundred bucks. Mm. I don't think he's like you're going to come at me with seven eight thousand dollars. No, but well, I we didn't even buy him. it for that. Yeah, so. I, I bought it for twenty five. I would sell it for two. I would probably take. I'd probably take fifteen, but I, I mean it, it's hundred, like fifteen hundred. Like yeah, the yeah. tow guys yeah. probably clean up like that. No, also they all steal from cars they tow. Car That's t- something I learned. When you're getting your car towed, yeah. it's like emotional experience. So people are probably like, "Yeah, I want to get rid of this," and it's probably like a decent car that doesn't have a ton of problems. When I was in college, I worked with a girl who was engaged to a tow truck driver, and she told <laughs> me all the shit he steals from cars he tows. Her engagement ring was one of those no things that way. he stole, that she bragged about. Well, they steal about. the cars, too. How? It's like legal stealing, but once it's towed and nobody claims it, then it's basically right, theirs. There's nothing well, to there steal is a from time this tow car. This we don't dude keep will it, but how do you steal get engagement it as ring? he's unloading it in the impound lot. Yes, yeah, some poor woman too. left her engagement ring in a car. Dude stole it. Why would you it, even take it And then proposed hand? to his girlfriend told her oh, it was no. stolen. If I ever take the ring off, the it's at the lot. house getting clean. Like, just, I don't take it off and leave a bunch it in the car. Like, Baby, will you I marry me? Anything. By the way, this ring is hot. <laughs> and, if she's, and if she says yes, that's a disqualifying factor. <laughs> right. She's like, oh my God, I love oh. you even more. On the other hand, I'm glad those two found each other and spared the rest of the civilized world their presence. Oh, man. They probably murder-suicided it, each other it, by it, now. It's Joker and Harley Quinn in the uh, early years. That's her pudding. But yeah. also, if you're leaving an engagement <laughs> ring in your car, that's kind of 
in a place where it's going to get towed. It's not yeah. stupid. If it's getting towed, you think you would yeah. take it out of the vehicle first. Like, maybe I should take this out. I don't think she intended to get towed, but she didn't intend to wear a ring wherever she was going. Hmm. At oh, any rate. That's actually it's another really? backstory. Yeah. What vehicles carry? Carrie was a, um, oh, she was a Chrysler. A K car? <laughs> no, 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 no. It Carrie. was a whole different. The movie Carrie? Christine. 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 I knew what she meant, but yeah, it was I don't know. Christine. Carrie. Carrie's I don't know what Christine the was. Halloween one. Carrie was the, or the prom. woman. Prom. prom. Yeah. yeah. yeah like, Christine's the killer re, car. Re, re. Yeah. I don't know what it was. They're Christine was. A, she was a Chrysler, but I don't okay. remember what model. But she Related was beautiful. Stephen King. She was the one that yeah. had the four Owns doors corgis. open. <laughs> that, that <laughs> suicide doors. Shops? Suicide doors. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, the doors were chopped. Yeah. Because Stephen Wait, King owns corgis. Wait, he has corgis? corgis? Yeah. yeah. Oh, my God. That's a whole other thing, chopped. <laughs> corgis. Is it? He went AKA. To the, he went to a chop shop. Yeah. We'll, <laughs> <laughs> we'll get the corgis in a handful more weeks. We got the no, next no. month planned out. Um, corgis. But, uh, uh, dream car, Marco? Dream car. So, like I mentioned, the Porsche Boxster was one of mine growing up when I was, like, 10 years old. Never meet your heroes. It has like problems with the IMS bearing. Da 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 da. But I'd still probably buy Mechanical one. Mechanical bullshit. If they had it, if it was like sorted. Um, Audi A4 is no trailer. longer one of my dream cars. I'm like <laughs> over that car. Um, I've rented. It's the German engineering, dude. Oh, I've rented a 911. Those things are crazy. If I had enough money, I would probably get a 911. It's one of those where, like, you just tap the gas and you start to feel G's. Did you do that in Vegas? This is crazy. I did that here. There's a place you can rent supercars. Nice. Supercars. And they (laughs) and they go. That's what they're called. They go in. They're just funny. They go in this canyon canyon drive, so you get to like experience everything, like all the windy mountain roads. There's like some straightaways. You You can go by yourself, or you can have a passenger. So if you want to do, but you have to have the you have to have the car guy with you no it's like parachuting. you just have to have like insurance <laughs> he straps himself to your back yeah. right, you sit on it. my <laughs> sit on my lap and drive the porsche and another time i did it with a gallardo so, and i always forward. thought before that the gallardo was like they didn't have the car that i wanted Sorry, lamborghini mm-hmm. yeah is it okay i can't remember which i think i wanted to try the ferrari but they didn't have the ferrari so the gallardo was like the second choice. Yeah. And I always thought Lamborghinis were overrated. But then when I actually drove one, I was like, okay, this is what everyone's talking about. I used to live in Las Vegas and I would see, you know. But I would never own a Lamborghini, which is ironic. I yeah. But I can Lamborghini understand story. why that's somebody's dream car. There were supercar rental places in Vegas where I lived that's for a while. Car. And you would see them while you're driving down the strip. The door and like on the strip, you can maybe go it's 23 miles per hour on a good day. So I'm like, what's the point of having a Lamborghini and driving down the Las Vegas strip at a crawl? Like nobody, it's, nobody it's, cares. That's like a challenger see you. in Kona. Yeah, yeah. Or, no, would, no, 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 Kauai. It was Kauai. Yeah. yeah. It's like if I'm gonna rent something like that, I want a straightaway, a safe one, and I want to be able to have I'm just fun with it. Pin it because I learned. We it used a rental. I don't think I could pin a Lambo. I I drove one of those <laughs> Teslas with the with the insanity mode. Oh yeah. And even that freaked me out. I didn't even get to top speed. Oh on really? That. Yeah. I hit the brakes way before they told me to. <laughs> Because I just freaked out. Because it's mean, so fast, quickly? Yeah, it goes like zero to... And it doesn't accelerate like a normal car. It's oh, it's just nuts. It's, like, beep, beep. it's nuts. And it goes in two, 2.3 seconds or something. Oh, wow. Up to like 60, 80 miles per hour. And then it keeps going. And they had cones marking off the like the brake zone. And I hit the brakes way before I was supposed to. Just because I panicked. Right. And then the lady who was in the back seat, who was watching me. The Tesla lady. She's like, <laughs> you could have gone faster. I'm like, I know. <laughs> I'm good. <laughs> I, uh, when I detailed cars, there was a handful of scenarios where I, I felt like I was doing pretty well. I, I, my buddy and I would personally, we were John Elway's personal detailers at one point. We would detail his boats and stuff like that. And we worked at John Elway Honda, which every once in a while he had, 
he would show up. He had his They'd office. They'd wash his cars, too. Well, but he had, a, <laughs> he had an office, which he, I think, maybe would show up maybe once a year. And it was usually to... Because okay. his chew that you had to clean. Well, it was his... Yeah, he, he oh would... Oh, God. Gross. He would... He dipped, and he would just As a spit. detailer, that He would just awful. spit <laughs> right on the fucking carpet. Like, just no spit cup, no shit. No, just fucking that's right so there. That's so gross. And, Chewing's and gross. that's not easy to get no, out No, he's of. had chew on national broadcast for the Broncos with wow. a spit cup. And I'm like, well, how are you using this representing cup, an organized as a player or as an owner? As, as his as, GM as role. As a GM. Yeah. yeah. Well, in, in his boats back in the day, we he, all know how he didn't, John Elway's gonna die. didn't <laughs> use spit cups. But <laughs> He's going to go the way of Gene um, Sis- or, uh, Ebert, Roger he Ebert. He also no had a <laughs> oh, share <God>. ownership <clears throat> with Emic Lamborghini, which it was Emic John Elway, whatever. But at that time, Dumb and Dumber was being filmed. And they rented yeah, the famous Lamborghini scene. They rented two Lamborghinis the from our up. dealership. Supercars are not just Lamborghinis. It's, it's that saying, whole class. That, mm. But yes. Anything you can't afford. They rented two <laughs> Lamborghinis yeah. for that movie. One of them, Jim Carrey fucking destroyed. Like, and, like the toilet scene for Jeff Daniels destroyed? or yeah, uh, awesome. Pretty much. Let's put it this way. <laughs> it would have been. This better. is how he did it. In the Lamborghini. It would, have been, <laughs> it would have been better for Paramount or whoever was the production agency mm-hmm. to buy the car than it was to pay for the repairs. What did he do to it? And did he Well, get he drove it around Vail in Breckenridge, and it, the, the clearance, I should you not, is oh, less sure. than six inches. Yeah. And up there with all the brick roads and everything else, the whole bottom of that car was tore up. Mm-hmm. Never meet your heroes. And... I I'd Jim still meet Jim Carrey. I, I never too, got too. to drive that car above 10 miles an hour, but I did get to drive a Lamborghini, and it was that one. And it was, when they brought it back to us, they brought it back on a flatbed. It was still <laughs> drivable, but they brought it back on a flatbed, and then they asked us to clean it up so they could see how much damage was there. And when we pulled it into the shop, I mean, there was bits and pieces of the front end just hanging there. <laughs> It was a, it was almost kind of like... Wouldn't so it be kind of fun that you could do that? There were guys that probably were close to tears. So when you said they rented that, two... But I didn't. Did they rent didn't, Did they rent the yeah. one for the movie shoot and then one for Jim Carrey to just fuck around in? Or and was it one was, for Jim Carrey and one for Jeff Daniels? No. And then the way, whoever's was not fucked up the most got to be in the movie. The way oh. I... Because Jeff way Daniels seemed like a sensible me, Lamborghini driver. <laughs> The way it was brought to me was He's that so nice. there was one for the movie and then there was one for the actors. Actor. And I don't know if Jeff Daniels got to any actors, real time. But yeah. from what we were told, it was Jim Carrey who drove that one. That was pretty fucking beat up. Now, whether it was a combination of the two of them or a handful, who knows? I think Lauren Holly got her hands on it. some crew people. That <laughs> it was all her. Jim got yeah. blamed. Yeah. Yeah. So if I, I got to show my ass, I'm going to fucking It's all about the girl. Ride. It was her, but I'll take the blame. She but, must be good. Uh, <laughs> that, was, good chopped. that was as close. <laughs> that was my only... Pureed. As far as a Lamborghini, that's my Lamborghini story. And... I, Andrew Jim Carrey yeah. story. Well, it proved I, your I, butt was where his butt was. At some point, yeah, you're He's right. He's one of my favorites. I, I might have sat where he farted. There you go. As far as dream cars, you I might feel have fart like where he farted where he sat. Yeah, I, I don't remember if I farted or not. I don't think I could drive a Lamborghini without intentionally farting. I would have to, just like you deserve this car. There you go. I got to take you down a peg. I got to warm up the seat a little I bit. I don't know. The leather I will is sit here so as long nice, as it you takes. Don't feel like farting. No. My <laughs> it was it was honestly it was really comfortable but i i mean it did remind me of when i was driving the little race cars at 15 because you're that low you're almost sitting i don't like it <clears throat> almost like in a cockpit they don't have great visibility no. <laughs> yeah. well, and like no, you, you talk about yeah. like so we have that little mini now and it is low but you feel every freaking bump it's not comfy well they say it's like a go-kart and if you ever driven a go-kart mm-hmm. yeah they Stiff suspension and and very reactive. And that's turning. not even in sport I mean, mode. it's fun. Yeah. You can go fast, but like the Jeep is bouncy. Don't get me wrong, because I love my Jeep, but it's bouncy. But it's a comfy bouncy. We're <laughs> back to <laughs> the rabbit. Many. You strategically <laughs> placed that rabbit. Like, that's it is a comfy good rabbit. Bouncy. It's a good <laughs> rabbit. It's got the fingers and everything. <laughs> but the mini is like you feel it. It's like it's too rough. It's rough. It's a rough. It's too I like close. a gentle ride. Mm-hmm. The car my mom drives now is a Mazda 2, and that car is literally a go-kart. 
and it's the same thing. You feel every bump, and it feels like a go kart. Like the handling feels like a go kart. The acceleration it's feels like a, like a go kart. Thin or thick? Like once, the Jeep is yeah. a thick. Well, I feel it, but it's thick. It's cushioned me. With it's three got C's. me. It's got me. And then the mini's like, ooh, rock, 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 rock. Like you feel it. <laughs> <laughs> I once rated a Mazda 5, and I've never been embarrassed so much in my life. Hmm. Our other car is a Mazda 5, and I actually <laughs> love it because it's a mini minivan. I planned that. <laughs> it doesn't know whether it's a minivan or that old Volks or that old uh, station wagon. Well, I use it for like. Um, it's like we'll just put a door on the fucking roof. We don't care anymore. Sometimes I We're side gig as a delivery driver. Zoom, zoom, motherfucker. The Mazda Five is like the perfect car for that. Oh sure, but I wasn't delivering shit. <laughs> I was just trying to get to my wedding uh, without being humiliated. But also, it randomly has that Tiptronic. At least ours does. And I was like, how is this minivan so sporty? <laughs> It's not a minivan. That's how. It doesn't know what the fuck it is. It's, it's a mini minivan. <laughs> it's, it's one a of those, fun car to drive. It's by. one of those alphabet cars. We'll hear about those. Once they get their uh, the AI programmed, they're going to start spreading off into dic- different sexual identities. Mazda 5 will lead that charge. It's like, I don't really feel like a minivan today. <laughs> I identify more as a crossover. <laughs> I see yeah. you working, dude. <laughs> I see yeah. you working. Oh, man. Uh, shall we kind of get to our final thoughts as we're an hour oh, and a half Oh, that's right. In? Final oh, thoughts. Geez. On cars. I think we had. This is. Yeah. I mean, we've, we've had some thoughts. We've had some stories. We've, we've had some dreams or our heroes that we no longer want to meet or hang out with. I'm not really a car guy or a car fan. I, 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 I like the ones you can sleep in. <laughs> I just love the idea that someday cars will be kind of a subscription thing and we won't have to own them anymore. They'll just, you can order an AI car to come and pick you up and take you to work and then leave. Are you talking well, like jets? Uh, yes. <laughs> yes. No, yes. he's talking about that Mitsubishi that was $500. <laughs> <laughs> no, so if you fly your car, you don't yeah. feel the bumps. I, the I'm, I'm a big perhaps. fan of eliminating cars from our culture. Mm. I would love that to happen. It's a That's lot me. of pollution. You sound like Brian Jennings. Hey. I don't want to ride a bike everywhere. I just want a car to take me places, and I don't have to worry about parking it. Well, cars would still exist, but you wouldn't get to drive them, which is the funnest part. And I don't have to pay for them, and I don't have to insure them. I can just I'll pay for the ride, but I don't need to own a car. Mm. No one does. Matt wants a bus. <laughs> <laughs> That only goes where I want it to go. <laughs> Forget all the there stops in between. Single. There you go. <laughs> yes, back to the uh, bare naked ladies. Want, like, yes. the, I want a device that measures out from me to the distance in between <clears throat> and then eliminates you need a bunch everyone. Of dogs that just pull you. Like, bare you naked ladies. No. No, I, I would K-cars not want. Too, I think. Yeah, it we, was a million <laughs> dollars. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, no, I wouldn't use animals that yeah, way. That's true. And I we're want too a, hot too. I want a you clean, need a cold climb. I want a clean that. burning electric vehicle that will take me where I want to go and then leave and we're gotta transactions work on, over. Got to work on that battery life. See, weirdly, I feel like as much as we talked about, like, dream a hooker car. car. Well, no, I'm happy with the damn RV and I don't consider it a car, but I've always wanted a Class A. It's his dream car. And I got it. It now. is. It's the RV. It's, it's weirdly, yeah. It has a fireplace. I want that, like, leave it to Beaver where it, like, starts with all the men walking into <laughs> their front yard Beaver. and you have no idea how they got there yeah. and where they came from and it's none of your business. You want to Star Trek it. You just want to be like, zoom. Yeah, oh, I, I don't know. Be fine that with movie. that. Oh. I, d- I don't know Star Trek, but leave it to Beaver. That's me. I want to just live in the moments between car rides. Do I need That's to give you my Amazon password so you can watch some good uh, old I've Star got, Trek? I've got Prime. I just am not interested in sci-fi. Oh, that's good in shit. In general. Man. I'm sure that'll be a topic one of these days, and I'll also have nothing to say <laughs> about that. <laughs> so. All right, next topic. Uh, That's well, topic. actually, no, kidding. the next topic alcohol. is going to be alcohol. Yeah. And we're going to have Never heard special guests. Nope. Yes, we are going to have a guest on. My master brewer, my the my master. boss, he doesn't know it yet, but that oh. is going to be Hopefully our next. Hopefully, he can topic. make it. He'll make it. We'll make it work. Uh, we'll just have to do it after. Camper. We'll just have to do it after a brew day, which might be next Friday. Yeah. So, uh, wrapping this one up. Any thoughts? Cars? Do you like? I like bed in cars. So, 
AKA you like a bus. wagon you bus. You like a bed in car. Why are we just getting this at the end? <laughs> <laughs> I asked you if guys. <laughs> but that's also with related cars to your ever. argument with the AI. You oh, can I'd just love that. Take a take nap. A nap. Hey. Yes, I would Especially love. Especially long road trips. I would love to be able to do my job. Not the job that I do once I get to where I'm going, but the job I need to do while I'm getting to where I'm go- need to go. That would be awesome. I want a car that is decent, safe. I don't even know what I fucking want. But I do like the bus where you can pop up and you can sleep in it. So you're not with Brendan because of any of the cars. We, I don't need we got to pin that. anything. I, need, I don't need to feel every bump on the road. But I don't want old school vans where like it's like... I think I can. I think I can like a train either, which mostly buses are Volkswagen. So I want me probably the new version where it actually get me up I-70 with a bed. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Margo? Margo. I just like driving. <laughs> I'm one of those weirdos. <laughs> zoom, zoom. That's probably why my side gig is delivery driving. Zoom. I just like driving. There's nothing wrong with that. I, I'm so you just zone you out there. and drive and get into your music. Yeah, but not zone out to the point where I need an AI. To no, 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 I don't mean that. But <laughs> I mean you like you get in your zone. Yeah, listen to podcasts. I enjoy it. Mm-hmm. All right. I well, hate traffic, though. Fuck traffic. There you Speaking go. Speaking of that, listen to this podcast, or thanks for listening to this podcast, and hopefully it was on a drive. And uh, go to the Facebook page. And uh, we'll post car or pictures of these cars that we were talking about. and uh, Catfish Camaro. Yeah, see you guys next week as we are going to talk alcohol. Thank you.